Hey everyone, welcome back with another video. This is the Once and Future King here once again. And today I'm going to be talking about, and I guess kind of analyzing and telling my thoughts, on a specific anime character that's the main character of an anime that is currently airing. And that is Rudeus Grey Rat from Mushoku Tensei. So Mushoku Tensei is one of my favorite anime in recent years. Um, it's really, really good. It's not perfect, but it's very entertaining and very interesting. Alright, definitely one of the best isekai anime, like, top five isekai anime that I've seen easily. Keep in mind, I haven't seen ReZero yet, but top five isekai anime easily. For me, it's like right up there with shows like uh, Slime Isekai and Sword Art Online. I really love Mushoku Tensei. And Ru I really love Rudeus, and that's kind of a controversial thing to say. Because Rudeus is kind of a controversial character. And in some ways, I get it. I get why. Okay? He's extremely perverted. Alright, basically, the, the series starts just like your typical isekai these days, where he... Although this series, I believe the light novel started in 2014, so it kind of predated a lot of the isekai that we're familiar with today. Now, I consider shows like Sword Art Online to be isekai, and all these other shows like the Dot .hack franchise, for example, where, a character, where characters get tra uh, trapped in a video game, those are still isekai. Also, if you really want to go back, there was Now and Then Here and There, which came out in the late 90s. Super depressing, by the way. Like, if you think ReZero is a depressing isekai, now and then, here and there, changes the fucking meaning of depressing. But it did predate a lot of the isekai that are very similar to it, where uh, the main character dies in the real world, which is basically just like our world. Alright. And then he gets transported, usually he, sometimes she, uh, ends up getting reincarnated in another world. Alright, basically reborn as a baby, essentially. And so, the character has to regrow up physically, however, he usually retains all of his memories from his previous life. I mean, in this, in this season alone, we have another one, the uh, reincarnated as, or the world's best assassin reincarnated as an aristocrat by the author of ReZero. Which is essentially the exact same setup. But again... Mushoku Tensei did, in a way, uh, start a lot of these tropes, you know. So, so you can't really say it's cliche, or if you, or if you can, then it's only because it's been oversaturated by this point, and it took so long for Mushoku Tensei to get adapted. I don't know why it took this long, because this, like this deep into the isekai boom. I don't know why it took this long. Alright. And Rudeus, like I said before, is one of my favorite characters of the year. He's definitely my favorite character in Mushoku Tensei. Mainly it's because, like, I relate to him. So in some ways. Like, obviously, obviously there's a lot of perverted characters in anime. You know? So, so that in and of itself isn't anything new. But what makes him unique is that he's it is definitely extremely perverted, but he also has his good traits too, even from the very beginning. All right, like he clearly cares about the people around him. All right, and there's also a point early on in season one where Eris tries, to, essentially tries to give herself over to him, uh, like her, her body essentially, but he but he restrains himself. So he does while he does still have more growth. I feel like he's not a complete piece of shit, <laughs> and he has definitely grown quite a bit as well. All right, but obviously, if you say that you like Rudeus, all right, that you relate to him, that's a very controversial thing to say. But let me make things perfectly clear: he's definitely a flawed character. All right. But I, I just love his... But he's not a terrible person. At least not anymore. Like, and I just think, first of all, I just think he's funnier than hell. Alright? Like, for me, no matter how bad you are, if you're able to make me laugh, you're alright in my book. I like to laugh. Okay? So, I think he's super fucking funny. Like, 90% of the entertainment value in Mushoku Tensei comes from his perverted antics. Alright? 
Now, the reason I wanted to make this video is to kind of explain my thoughts on the character and explain that, in a way, I'm, I, at least I was kind of worried where the story would go, where his character would go. I'm, I, now, I'm not as much anymore. I have talked to some people online and they've assured me that the character will go in a direction that I'm going to be satisfied with. And by the way, if, if, if it didn't, then it didn't. It's like, the author has the right to take the story wherever the hell he pleases. Okay. So even if it didn't go in a direction that didn't satisfy me, like, I'd be pissed, but at the end of the day, it's not my fucking story, so who gives a shit, you know? That's kind of my thoughts on it. Like, I don't have the right to tell the author what direction he can take his story, but I still have the right to be upset, if that makes any sense. Okay. Basically, my fear was that the, the story would go in direction of essentially making him not be a pervert anymore. Which I have two problems with that. One, you can't stop being a pervert. It's kind of like a core, the core of who you are. If you're a pervert, that, that, that's just how it is. Okay, and you just have to live with that. Even if you, for some reason, don't agree with it, you just have to live with that. You can't just change of the fundamental core of who you are. You, know, you, you can't change if something makes you horny at pure random, okay? Which is the core of what being a pervert is. <laughs> but also number two, I feel like... Uh, I don't want to sound like an SJW. I really don't. I don't want to use the term problematic, and I don't think it would be problematic. Or anything, st or any stupid shit like that. Alright. But it would definitely imply a message that I disagree with. And normally, if a story has a message that I disagree with, I'm still able to like the story if it's executed well. But the line that I draw is when it's a message that is can be easily proven wrong. And that is that being a pervert automatically makes you a bad person. That if you're a pervert, there's something wrong with you. Okay that you need to change. And that is just objectively wrong. All right? No matter how big of a pervert you are, that is objectively wrong. There is nothing wrong with being a pervert at all. All right? I, like I said before, it's, a, it's the fundamental core of who you are. Okay? And you can be the biggest pervert degenerate in the world, kind of like me, and still be a good person. I like to think I'm somewhat of a decent person. Of course, I... I'm, I'm sure that's what most people would like to think about themselves. But regardless. So, yeah, so I definitely don't want that message to be in the series. If I were to give an example, I think the best example would be Master Jiraiya from Naruto. Because I'm, I'm such a huge fucking Naruto, and of course I have to bring up a Naruto reference. Actually, I'm not anymore. But I used to be. When I was a teenager, I was the biggest fucking Narutard that you've ever met. Anyways. Master Jiraiya was amazing. I think Kishimoto did an amazing job with that character. Because he was such a huge, perverted degenerate. Alright. I mean, the whole idea of his character was that he was this old man in, like, his 50s, I think. Who constantly, like, peeped in on women's bathhouses. To get for, for, for the purpose of research, so he could write his book series, Make Out Paradise, which was a huge seller. Kakashi Hatake actually read the series as well. So, I'm a huge pervert. I mean, the, the idea of research definitely wasn't wrong, because he did use that information to write his book series. But still, there were other reasons, obviously. But... That wasn't all there was to his character. He was still a great person. All right? He was extremely wise and uh, respectable. All right? And I think Kishimoto did a fantastic job of balancing the two. It's all about balance, I feel like. I, the place I want Rudy's character to end is a place of balance, where like he's a lot wiser and more respectable than he is now. But he's still a huge pervert, so that part of his personality is kept intact. Um, and also, like, the humor of the series is kept intact. Because, like I said, the entertainment value of the series comes from the humor. And the humor is, ninety like, 90% him. 
So if he somehow managed to magically stop being a pervert altogether, that would drop the entertainment value for me significantly. So, the, you know, there's that. Like, I definitely want the series to keep being entertaining. I don't think that's too much to ask. I'm also confused about some things, like... I've heard some people say that he needs to change because his perversions cause him issues, but at least so far in the anime, keep in mind, I haven't read the manga or the light novels. So far in the anime, I haven't really seen that. I mean, the old, nobody around him, know, nobody who he knows, knows how much of a pervert he is, I don't think. Um, outside of maybe, I forget the guy's name, but that character who wields that like staff that he's currently traveling with. But the only reason I say that is because he seems... It's intuition from watching a lot of anime. Like, he seems like the kind of character to be able to put two and two together. But there, I don't have any actual evidence for that. The only other person I know for a fact who does is their family maid. Because she walked in on him uh, sniffing her panties. But... She never didn't really make a big deal of it. Because even though he is mentally in his mid-30s... Physically, he is still a child. He was still a child, so she didn't really make a big deal of it. So that really didn't really cause him any problems. I also find that uh, when people criticize uh, Rudy, there's a, a lot of hypocrisy, or maybe just not realizing other characters that they probably love are just like him. Like in Konosuba, we have two, which Konosuba is one of my favorite anime of all time. We have two. They're Kazuma, which, you know, people call Rudy a perverted piece of shit for sniffing his maid's panties. But when Kazuma uses his powers to literally steal the panties off of women, innocent women, while they're wearing of him, they laugh their asses off. What the fuck is this shit? I... But even more than him, which I didn't realize until recently, somehow, is Darkness. Rudy and Darkness are so phenomenally similar. It's kind of crazy. Like, if they knew each other in real life, I think they would get along very well. I think Darkness would literally be in love with Rudeus. Like, because, like, Rudeus isn't, like wouldn't normally be an abuser, I don't think, unless, you know, his woman was into that, like, darkness. And you know what? He can have four, because I'm well, spoilers, by the way, I'm well aware that at the end of the series, uh, he's basically going to end up with all three, with, with three wives and have children with all three of them, uh, Eris, Roxy, and Sylph. He's going to end up with all three of them. So he can have a fourth one, make it a harem. Uh, I wonder if there's been any, like, fan fiction or fan art of Rudeus and Darkness. Am I the first person to realize the incredible similarities between the two? And Darkness is a character where you could reasonably point out that her perversions have caused her issues. Because they've literally caused her to lose fights. Like, I don't think that's been the case with Rudeus, you know? And, like, everyone around her knows how, much, how incredibly perverted she is. Like, at least Rudeus is somewhat skilled with keeping it hidden. Darkness is not, although I also have to question if she ever even attempts to keep it hidden. I think she kind of wants people to know how perverted that she is, that she's a masochist. So that hope, in the hopes that, she'll, that they'll start abusing her. But... Okay, that's also something I wanted to bring up, is that those two characters, especially Darkness, are so similar to him, and yet people just don't seem to notice or they don't seem to care for some reason. I don't know if it's hypocrisy or just ignorance. He's somehow not noticing, but yeah, those two characters, especially Darkness, are so similar to him, and people give Rudy all sorts of shit. What the fuck? I also want to mention that Rudeus is often criticized, and in a way, understandably so, for his, let's just say, lollycon tendencies. Because even though he has, you know, the body of a child, he's technically a grown man, like, mentally. But he still fantasizes about these underage girls. Now look, I get it. 
But I still kind of have to feel bad for him. All right, because, and you might laugh at this, but I'm saying this 100% seriously. This is a grown man who died and got reincarnated as a child. All right. A grown man with urges who died and got reincarnated as a child. I'm saying this with 100% sincerity. That has got to be one of the worst hells that anyone could experience. I'd want to fuck anything with two legs as well if I was in his position. But anyways though, that pretty much does it for this video. I just wanted to make a video explaining my thoughts on this character, why I really love him, and why I'm excited to see where he goes in the future. I have heard that the Jiraiya co comparison is actually kind of apt, and that he basically, it basically does become a thing of balance in the future with him, where he remains extremely perverted, but he learns that there's a time and place, okay? And that's how he betters his life, not by somehow magically stop being being a pervert I, which again is literally impossible anyways so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please make sure to leave it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content in the future uh, and hit the notification bell if you want to know whenever i upload a new video i release new videos every monday morning at 8 a.m central time Please make sure to comment down below on your thoughts on this video and on Rudius in general. Do you agree or disagree with any of my opinions? What do you think about the comparison with Jiraiya? Also, what do you think about the comparison with Kazuma and Darkness? And hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time.